welcome viewers to the massive open online course on the paper money and financial markets where we shall discuss today on the module 19 problems of asymmetric information by the word asymmetric information we mean that when the information is not perfect or there is a lack of coordination among the information set the finance theory is based on the assumption that the markets are perfect so because the information prevailing in the market may not be adequately perfect among all the members or the participators, as because information actually passes without no cost, so it is immediately reflected in the price and that makes the market to be imperfect. So in some of the cases it is seen that the parties cannot reach the same information simultaneously because in most of the cases the sellers have the more information compared to the buyers and thereby the level of information is not symmetric. And at times, such information asymmetry between the parties may come to running order of the market. That means whenever we call for a market functioning, then we believe that both the agents of the market must have the same set of knowledge. But because of the imperfection in the knowledge, in most of the times the price discrimination or the price distortion takes place and that makes the market to be more and more non-symmetric. When we go by the concept of asymmetric information and developing the concept, we mean that all the economic agents are equally informed and if that is comes in, then we say symmetric information. But that is possible in a perfectly competitive market which is very much unrealistic because here the products are homogeneous, everywhere there is an uniform price prevailing and that's why information is also considered to be highly symmetric. But in the real life, we may not get this instance. Because in many instances, when agents transact with each other, one agent is more informed than the other, and so that the transaction of the other party may not be known to the other contender in this process. And this is called asymmetric information. So whenever we go for asymmetric information, it basically gives rise to a scope of opportunities because somewhere one party gains at the cost of the other and that makes the information to be more and more skewed. So thereby we open up with the first question which says, what is meant by asymmetric information? So when the agents transact with each other, one agent may be more informed about some aspect of the transaction than the other party, and this is called asymmetric information. That means it is said that one of the agents among the two parties is having more knowledge which makes the imperfection to continue and to actually create distortions in the market structure. Secondly, we come up with some problems of asymmetric information. The first problem is referred as lemon problem. So here the lemon is basically used to describe the cars in a poor condition in a car market. So whenever we go for the resale of the cars or the sale of the second hand cars, then in this particular market, the seller is more informed than the buyer because the seller is well informed about the status of the car in terms of the running, in terms of the mileage, or in terms of the capacity of the engine and other parts, and the buyer is always having the less information. So this difference of information between the buyer and the seller basically affects the product quality, which may not imply that the perfect pricing can be done, and somewhere or the other, the full pricing model, as occurs in a normal market structure, does not operate. So in this case, a potential buyers are uncertain about the quality of the product offered, so they would abstain from paying a higher price of such product. So definitely in the car resale market, the buyer is not expected to pay the full price because the buyer already has the information that seller has more information than him. So somewhere or the other, he wants a discount or some kind of a modification on the final price of the car. So this happens because information set differs among both the buyer and the seller. Next we have, in case of the lemon problem, 
the seller would not agree to offer the product in hand at the price lower than the real value. So definitely the seller will want to enjoy the profit. So there is no word of compromise in these things. And because of the risk of buying the car, ask for the discount in the price, such requests might discourage the seller to sell. So that means if the buyer is willing to purchase at a higher discounted price, seller is not willing to offer, then this type of market mechanism fails. And that is how in this type of problems, the problem of asymmetric information comes up. So credit markets are commonly affected by imperfections in the same way because the seller of the bond is more and more acquainted with higher information than the buyer of the bond because of the track records or the capacity of the bonds to absorb the shocks. So lenders might lack the necessary information to set the price of the loans, which will be reflected in the borrowers and the lenders' transactions. So in this particular problem, we are basically explaining the concept of adverse selection. And that is what the question comes up, that what is meant by the lemon problem? So by the lemon problem, we mean that lemon here used to actually identify the poor cars or the resale of the cars, where definitely the buyer has less information than the seller, which affects the quality of the car and it prevents the flow of perfect information and thereby the market does not prevail. So lemon is used to describe the cars in a poor condition in a car market, difference of information between the buyer and the seller as to the product quality may impair the flow of the market and sometimes fully prevent the car trade. And in this particular problem of adverse selection, potential buyers are uncertain about the quality of the product offered. So they would abstain from paying a high price for that product because definitely high price means that they are get basically getting cheated. So they will always want a discounted price which the sellers will not be willing to sell off. So that is how the problem of lemon problem comes in. Another important problem in this context is a mortgage problem which is also another example of adverse selection problem. Mortgage problems observed in the markets which is basically in case of the housing loans. Because housing loans firstly were granted to the investors with lower strength of repayment. This was the major origin of the financial crisis of the US financial markets in 2008-9 where the debt repayment had become a major issue in the long run. Because the loans were being offered to those people who have less chances of repaying the loans in the proper time. And so applicants were asked to disclose their income, but no proof has come up of their disclosures. Because this makes the people to be more vulnerable and they're accessible to the loans. In addition, it is recorded that borrowers requesting from the loans called as adaptable interest rate loans. So loans were provided or it was being done with the fewer documents of disclosure. And that is basically not at all to be done in a financial market. So in case of the mortgage problem, it is seen that the less documents were produced by the borrowers, where there are high tendencies of getting the loans to be not repaid or defaulters would be on come up. And thereby this is also an example of adverse selection. So a loan was asked to provide few documents Financial institutions experience troubles because it leads to the severe crisis, financial demotions, and funds started to lose losses one by one. So the end of the day, there was a lack of confidence in the financial institutions, shrinking of the loan offerings, and this trend continued and finally the non-performing assets came up making the lead creditors make adverse selections because this is an adverse selection in the sense that they are willing to provide loans to those people who are not well off or who are not willing to actually disclose their actual income status but the loans are offered to them. So thereby adversely selecting the people is basically one of the problem of asymmetric information because these people are not at all aware about the information of the borrowers but the loans were being granted. So this is actually an example where the loan providers are having no information about the borrowers and ultimately the problem of crisis comes in. 
Another problem referring to the misuse of funds under asymmetric information is the moral hazard problem. So when we talk about a moral hazard problem where the creditor cannot monitor the actions of the borrower, because whether the borrower will repay the debt or not, no kind of regulations can be done, no kind of monitoring can be done on a regular basis, and thereby the borrower takes for granted that loan repayment may be done or may not be done. So in most of the default cases, the borrowers do not repay the loan, and ultimately the economy or the banking sector had to undergo a huge loss. So borrower may get engaged in any some kind of risky projects, where the creditor did not approve because the creditor had no control, had no information, had no kind of disclosure on that. However, due to the presence of moral hazard, the creditor would not know where the funds it lends are to be employed because the fund is being granted, but how the fund is basically being utilized or implemented, that information is not carried by the creditor. And thereby, in such cases, risk takes place. So this can be done by any kind of regulation or monitoring device based on the terms and conditions of the agreement made between the investor and the lender. So regarding the two problems of asymmetric information where we find what is mean by adverse selection, Housing loans were granted to investors with lower strength of repayment. Applicants were asked to disclose their income, but no such disclosures have come up. That means selecting the people whom the loans will be provided are not the right people because information is not there by the creditors regarding the full strength of the borrowers. And the second question, what is meant by moral hazard? Here also we see that moral hazard refers to the situation where the creditor cannot monitor the actions of the borrower and thereby the investment the borrower makes by taking the loans cannot be regulated or cannot be intervened. So in most of the cases, the borrower may get engaged in risky projects which the creditor does not approve, but the creditor cannot also intervene in it. So this is a problem of a moral hazard, particularly in the financial markets. Now we move on to the advantages of asymmetric information. Though we accompany a lot of problems regarding this, but still there are certain advantages if information is not always perfect. The first one is, is increasing the knowledge between the experts in the specialized fields. Because more information if any agent has, with that full set of information the agent can diversify his portfolio and can engage in various other type of business decisions. But asymmetric information also enhances the productivity of the professionals and experts because they see their clients as being reliant on them because they have more information, particularly from one side of the party has more information. So using that, they can choose the clients and they can also expertise their clients or also exercise their talents on them. So in a way, these are the advantages. But disadvantages are always offsetting the advantages in such an imperfect world. So firstly, among the disadvantages, asymmetric information can lead to inefficiencies in certain markets because market failure takes place. Market cannot operate freely because there is a always inequality or a gap between the information sets, but both the parties are participating in the market, but one is having an upper hand than the other. So this is a source of imperfection. Secondly, imbalanced information can also cause fraudulent tendencies in the market because some professionals can use this extra information to misuse and also to charge the other party because the other party is absolutely at the mercy of the full informed party. So in that way, somewhere or the other, some kind of litigations, some kind of extra cost or expenses can be bared. Asymmetric information leads to abuse the party with less information because this abusal can be taken up by the legal intervention because this actually makes one party to exercise exploitative practices over the other. And this is one of the greatest cause of mistrust among the parties in any financial engagement. <music> so
so we go by the questions. First question regarding this particular discussion is, what are the advantages of asymmetric information? Definitely the advantage is expansion of knowledge, usage of more skills and expertise over the productivity. And the second question goes by, what are the disadvantages of asymmetric information? Definitely it lead to inefficiencies, particularly the market inefficiencies, because the rise in gap will be ever increasing. Always the one party will have more information than the other. And if this is not rectified, then this gap will be on the rise. And secondly, this can also prompt the better informed party to participate in some kind of exploitative tendencies. So imbalanced information can also cause fraudulent tendencies in the market. That means within the market, some kind of distortions or some kind of discrimination can take place. Now we go for the remedies to asymmetric information in financial markets. The very first solution for the producers is to provide warranties, guarantees and refunds. So when we go for any kind of second hand sale of cars in the market, we go for warranty, which is basically a contract which takes care of the hidden cost or the hidden risk, which is inherent in the problem because of information asymmetry. In addition to the seller granted warranties, the third party companies can offer their own warranties in form of insurance that can take care of some cost to the consumer. We also take hold of the insurance or car insurance or any kind of non-life insurance, particularly for a property resale, where that insurance takes care of the risk which are involved in the process. In addition, government can also regulate and, and also take care of the quality of the product that is offered. Another initiative which can be taken up is the consumers and competitors to act as monitors for each other. That means consumer reports, any kind of feedback reports, online services, reviews, all these are considered to be one of the quality judgment reviews before the engagement done in such kind of exercises where information asymmetry is there. Online reputation management solutions also allow the companies to track what the consumers say about the brands, what is the review status, whether it's in the social media or in any kind of the search engines. So all these are also inherent in the problem of asymmetric information. So based on this, we invite a question on this, where we say, suggest any remedies to asymmetric information. So the first remedy is warranties, and the second one is monitoring. So by warranties, we mean any kind of cost protective shield is provided, either in terms of a warranty policy or in terms of an insurance policy. And by monitoring, it takes care of the quality of the product, the feedback through the review st structure, or any kind of online review platforms where the brand review is being done about the product or about the resale market of that product. Now we move on to a more structured and a more organized government action to mitigate asymmetric information in the financial markets. So what can be the government steps to take care of this problem? Because this problem can give rise to some kind of distortions or even fraudulent practices between the two parties in any engagement. The government action comprises of availability of information, guarantees and warranties, taxes and subsidies, industrial standards, monitoring and controlling, and finally, licensing and liability laws. Now we will take up each of these action one after the other. The first policy action that calls for availability of information, because this is the core foundation of the problem, where information is not adequate or is not complete among the two parties in any kind of engagement. So here the greater the consumer should be given the access to information, because the producer or the buyer has more information always than the consumer. It is also impossible to provide all the information, but whatever information is sufficient to make the process to move on. As a result, along with the improved customer satisfaction, 
overall quality of the product can be improved because this calls for customer satisfaction at the same time. And also some kind of seamless communication can re and resolve the problem in many cases because the communication should be transparent and to be given to both the parties as maximum as possible. The second one is regarding the issuing of guarantee or warranty policies. So this is benefiting offers a cushion to the consumer against faulty products. So basically in a resale market, or in the sale of the second-hand goods, always there is a cost or a risk associated with the defective items, so some kind of a protective cushion is being provided. It offers a type of a security that a particular product is of superior quality, so this security can be done through signing an insurance contract or through any kind of warranty policy which is being given. It is also useful in negotiating the price as well. Because in case of any defect, the seller option of returning or replacement is available for a given period. Because this is also found out in the real life, returning the defective product or replacing the product within the warranty period. Because these are all some kind of protective cushion or some kind of faith which is being provided to the buyer. Because from the very beginning, the buyer is having less information than the seller. The third important policy action can be taxes and subsidies. So this takes care of the opposite poles of the government policy. By taxes, it means a penalty which is given to the seller who possess more information than the buyer, so that the government is regulating the exercise. And by the subsidy, it means the grant of subsidy acting as a shield to the asymmetric information. So some kind of extra coverage is done by the government in this regard. So this can be taken up in the extreme cases when the exploitative practices are on the rise. The next important policy action can be industrial standards. Because industries also should possess some preconditions to be made for providing the goods and services because it offers high quality products, but at the same time, whenever the industrialist has more information than the beneficiaries, some kind of exploitative practices can come up like charging a higher price or taking the market to be more monopolized. So in such cases, the government can come on or can intervene and go for a strict auditing and through auditing policy, industrial standardization can be done. So this is basically maintaining the proper in industrial standards to check any kind of information asymmetry. Next one is monitoring and controlling. Because this is basically being done by the government in majority of the countries, because the government should actually employ certain agencies or a third party to so look into the functioning of these markets or to bridge in the information gap. So without proper monitoring and controlling, farms will be impacted by various problems which are executed by the illegal beneficiaries because these beneficiaries are basically making the exploitative practices on the rise. Licensing and liability laws. Because under the Consumer Protection Act, some kind of licenses or permits have been given to the producers for selling goods and services. So these permits are to be given based on certain strict regulations. So the law must be carefully set and also must be regularly monitored. Farms also should be subject to severe penalties if the minimum industry standards are not met. So provided the standards are met, this can be done. So we come up with the policy actions in terms of a question. So suggest any policy action to mitigate asymmetric information. The policy actions comprises of information availability to both the parties as maximum as possible, issuing of a guarantee and the warranty policy, similarly imposition of tax and subsidies, particularly tax on the buyer and subsidy on the seller, Industrial standardization to be taken up. Monitoring and controlling, because monitoring has to be done based on the government regulations and controlling also to be done in the same way through various kind of reportings. And licenses to be given or permits to be given taking care of the asymmetry. 
and the liability laws also takes in place. So in this particular module on asymmetric information, the issues on asymmetric information when it arises by unequal knowledge between the parties of the transaction, that also is one of the inherent problem. So unique advantage is been given to the seller who possesses always an additional knowledge. It occurs primarily before the transaction a pre-contractual problem. It does not get affected after the transaction. Before the transaction, the seller always possesses this extra information. The two problems are very much prominent. One is adverse selection and one is moral hazard. These are very pronounced problems, particularly in adverse selection, we're selecting the group who are basically making the problems to co come up, particularly in the debt repayment. And in the moral hazard also we get the same because the seller has no information on the buyer, how the buyer is actually utilizing the funds. And at the same time, government actions are necessary to intervene in time so that the checks and balances of asymmetric information can be done. Thank you.